Hey folks, Carl Kischel here and welcome to this edition of the Microsoft Cloud News Update. Researching the cloud blog so you don't have to. We have a lot to cover this week, including some new updates regarding Azure Cost Management, new features for the Azure VPN Gateway, some Azure Identity updates, SharePoint Online updates, and more. So with that, let's jump into it. All of the updates I'll be covering, the links to these updates can be found in the description area for this video. So our first update is regarding Azure cost management and some uh, billing updates with ACM. And there is a lot here in this link, uh, really too much to go over here. But to be honest with you, one of the favorites here regarding cost management is the ability to do uh, date picking. So if you scroll through this update, you'll find that within the uh, cost management console within your Azure portal, there will be a new option here, the ability to do uh, custom date ranges within cost management. So this was a long time coming and is now available within your portal. There are a couple other updates here regarding Azure Labs, etc. So check out the link for more info. Now available, multiple features for Azure VPN Gateway. So there are a couple of really cool features here that are now available for the Azure VPN Gateway, uh, including the ability to support multiple authentication types. So this would be for open VPN type tunnel, Azure AT, cert based uh, radius, etc. So a lot of new authentication types are now available. Um, and also VPN connection management. So there are new enhancements here within the VPN console that allow you to individually reset the connection instead of the whole gateway. So click on these links for more info and details. Azure Security Center updates for this month. So there are a couple of uh, links here in this particular post that gets into um, some details on a lot of different updates. But I think the most significant one here is regarding Microsoft Defender for Endpoint and the integration between that and Azure Defender now supporting both Windows Server 2019 and Windows 10 WVD. So WVD, Windows Virtual Desktop, that is a facility within Azure to run a specialized version of Windows 10 client in the, uh, the Azure uh, portal and the Azure platform. Uh, if you click on this link, I think, uh, again, the most exciting announcement here is the integration between Azure Defender and um, Defender for Endpoint. So they are now included both within the same license for servers. So some extra value there on the server side. So check out the link for more infos and details. Some April updates regarding Azure Active Directory. And uh, there are three in this particular post that covers continuous access evaluation, embedded Azure AD B2C sign-in uh, integration with iframes, and some custom email verification for Azure B2C. I think the more significant one is regarding continuous access evaluation. So what is that? It's a combination of multiple technologies within Azure Active Directory in conjunction with Microsoft Graph and the Graph API, which does a continuous um, security connections and evaluation and monitoring. So with CAE, if you have a particular security event, uh, for example, if you need to um, revoke um, authorization or authentication for a particular user using CAE will automatically terminate that user's uh, connectivity and connection into the particular service. That could be OneDrive client, um, et cetera. So um, pretty cool feature and functionality that is now available within Azure Active Directory. We have some SharePoint Online Roadmap updates, and this particular post includes some enhancements to SharePoint Online that include the availability of the Immersive Reader, um, some uh, integration with Microsoft Lists for mobile devices, 
Power BI visualizations, OneDrive sync support for 64-bit windows, and so on. So a lot of cool updates here. If you're not familiar with uh, Immersive Reader, that is a really it's an accessibility feature built into the Microsoft platform. And Immersive Reader allows you to um, have the system read pages to you in a manner of ways so they could be um, dictated to you there could be a, a highlight so as you're reading it could be there would be a, a highlighter highlighting each word as it's being read to you uh, etc a lot of these features and functionalities have been available across microsoft products including OneNote, the new edge browser uh, etc word for example and it's now available in sharepoint there's also some new templates that are now available, web parts, etc. So a lot of great reading here for SharePoint online fans. Adjusting versioning retention for PST files. And this is specific for OneDrive and SharePoint users. This is currently in development and slated for released August of this year, 2021. So this new enhancement will allow you to create um, custom policies for PST files specifically. So as you may know, a PST file, which is basically a data file for the Outlook client on a Mac or, or a PC, can take up a lot of room depending on how much uh, email you have uh, being circulated and stored within your PST file. So your PST is your local data file. Some folks may want to use OneDrive or SharePoint to make a backup or store that PST file, which is perf perfectly legitimate. Um, but knowing that they take so much room, you may not want to have all the versioning controls of a PST file that um, you would normally have for a Word file, Excel, Excel file, etc. So having the facilities to create specific policies for PSTs will help you with your storage sprawl and help minimize storage utilization of your Office and Microsoft 365 platforms. So keep on the lookout for this feature coming soon. Building a timer app for Teams meetings. So this is a pretty handy facility and uh, I like this tutorial because it gives you a really good idea on how to use the Power Platform to create a low-code application for Microsoft Teams. And this particular app is a timer app. So it's a, it's a great way, maybe if you have a longer meeting and you say, hey, let's get back in five minutes, three minutes, etc. cetera, uh, you can have a countdown timer to um, count down the time within that particular Teams meeting. And there are a couple other use cases for this as well. So um, you can download it and uh, install it within your Teams platform. But if you're interested in learning more about how to write and build your own low-code app using Power Apps. This is a pretty good tutorial to go through all the different steps that are needed and uh, educate yourself on how to create Power Apps for Teams. So uh, def definitely check this out if you're interested in creating your own low-code apps using Power Apps. There is a new workbook available for Azure Sentinel and Zero Trust. So if you're not familiar with Azure Sentinel, it is Microsoft's uh, SIEM platform, allows you to collect uh, security and other event information from both uh, Microsoft products and services and non-Microsoft products and services, such as firewalls, routers, uh, et cetera. The Zero Trust Initiative or concept is, uh, is in a security approach that you uh, normally would um, assume a breach within your network. So in addition to uh, preventing breaches from happening, you also want to have a mentality uh, and philosophy of that your network has already been breached and looking for bad actors that may be already inside of your network. So this workbook is a series of PowerShell scripts and playbooks that you can apply to Azure Sentinel and provide the learning, learning and supporting, monitoring, etc., for uh, assumed breach incidences. 
So there's a lot of details here uh, in terms of the book and its availability and how to apply it to Azure Sentinel to improve your security posture. Upload files to Azure Blob Storage using Power Automate Desktop. So um, this is a really good blog post if you wanted to get a little bit deeper into what Power, Power Automate Desktop can do for you. So it's an automation tool that looks at um, particular processes um, that are desktop bound uh, or normally executed from a desktop, such as a Windows PC, and using Power Automate to automate uh, a sequence of steps to um, create a, a path for, in this case, would be copying files into a storage service. So you may be thinking, well, uh, why not use something like OneDrive SharePoint Online, etc. And you can certainly do that for sure. Uh, but with Azure Blob Storage, you have a, a lot of different options and some flexibility in terms of low cost storage for your Azure Blob. Uh, this could be hot storage, cool storage, archive storage, uh, etc. But in any event, if you want to learn more about Power Automate, it's a free tool for your Windows desktop. You can download it and uh, go through the steps here in creating your flow using Power Automate to copy files. So for example, you could set up a, a Power Automate flow that says, you know, anytime I um, have a new file uh, dropped at this location, it could be an online location or a location on a server, on your desktop, etc. copy that file into Azure Blob Storage uh, for backup purposes. So it's a pretty neat way to get a little more familiar with Azure Blob Storage, Power Automate, and the whole ecosystem of the Power Apps and the Power Platform on Microsoft. Preventing Azure Active Directory Terms of Use from Blocking into an Enrollment. So this particular post gets into the, uh, the phenomena and the issue if you're using Microsoft Intune uh, to do uh, automated enrollment of your devices. Um, and, and again, uh, Intune has been changed in terms of, of its name uh, from Intune to Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Um, but so think of it from either Intune or Endpoint Manager perspective. But if you're doing automated device enrollment, uh, typically you have a, a terms of use page that has to be uh, accepted. Um, and that is done for compliancy reasons, and it's done uh, typically from an end user perspective has to accept the TOU. So this particular blog post gets into some details on how to prevent Azure Active Directory's terms of use from blocking into enrollment and helping you to automate and fully automate the process of device enrollment. So check out the blog for more details on how to enable this new feature. And last but not least, understanding Microsoft virtual machine sizes in uh, Azure, in the Azure portal. So within uh, the Azure portal, if you're using virtual machines for IaaS purposes, infrastructure as a service, uh, I thought this blog post was a pretty cool perspective in terms of how to understand the, uh, the naming conventions that are being used for the different sizes of Azure Virtual Machines and what the, how the product group came up with some of these uh, nomenclatures for these naming sizes, uh, et cetera. So it uses the analogy of t-shirt sizes going from you know, small, medium, large, extra large, so on and so forth. And it gets into the details and explaining what the different sizes are. For example, F series, B series, so on and so forth and what it means regarding price calculation and using the pricing calculator. So if you use a lot of virtual machines in the Azure portal and you wanted to make sense of what the sizes dictate and what they mean from a background perspective, this gives you a lot of great detail on understanding all the nuances of virtual machine sizing in Azure. And that concludes this edition of the Microsoft Cloud News Update. I did forget one thing, so I wanted to remind everyone to register for Ignite. It's later this month, lots of free training and the opportunity to interact with the product group and some other MVPs in real time. So 
In order to register, go to ignite.microsoft.com, follow the prompts to, to register. So I hope you enjoyed this week's session. There was a lot of news to cover. Keep in mind all the links are in the description of this video. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up and also subscribe so you're up to date on our weekly update series here. Uh, and also don't forget to share. Share this on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, uh, etc. If you have any questions, I can be found on LinkedIn or Twitter. Feel free to shoot me a note, either that way or through the comments section. I read all the comments. So with that, appreciate your time this week. I wish you well, and we'll catch you next time. Take care.